Hello, and welcome to this video where we're going to talk about public health. Public health has made a significant impact on the health of populations, making people healthy and saving lives. For example, in the United States, between 1900 to 1999, people's life expectancy increased by over 30 years. It's estimated that 25 of these extra years gained are due to public health interventions. So, in this video, we're going to take a look at what public health is, how it's different to clinical medicine, who is responsible for it, and how it's done. First of all, let's have a look at what health is. The World Health Organization defines health as a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being, and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. This is a bold and ambitious definition that encourages people to look beyond diseases and focus not only on the physical aspect of health, but also the mental and social aspects as well. And public health? Well, public health is the science and art of preventing disease, prolonging life, and promoting health through the organized efforts of society. Okay, so how is it different to clinical medicine? Let's take a look at an example. Imagine someone has a car accident and fractures their leg. A clinician's main focus is the immediate health issue, fixing the fracture. Clinicians focus on the individual. The public health approach would be holistic and focus on figuring out how and why this person had an accident so that actions can be taken to prevent it from happening again. For example, why did he have the accident? Was there a problem with his vision? Did he have inadequate driving skills or a poor attitude towards driving? Was he under the influence of alcohol or drugs when he was driving? Were there laws against this and resources to enforce it? What were the community expectations or norms around driving? Did he have a good social support network to help his recovery and prevent this from happening again? Did digital media contribute to the accident? Was the road he was driving on safe? Were there any commercial factors such as vehicles in the market with inadequate safety features? Was he driving a car that was well-maintained? If not, why not? Could he not afford it? If so, why not? Did he have a job that didn't pay well? Why is that? Was it because he didn't have access to a good education? Were there good health services to support his treatment and recovery? Were they accessible? As you can see from this example, health is determined by a complex interaction between many different factors or determinants of health. These include who they are, what they do, and the conditions in which they're born, grow, live, work, and age, the social determinants of health. It also includes commercial and digital determinants of health. So to make a difference in health, it's important to understand these determinants and how they interact with each other in order to address them. Public health focuses on upstream factors to make changes that can benefit the health of the population as a whole. This seems like a very broad and complex task, doesn't it? So let's have a look at how public health works. The World Federation of Public Health Associations has developed a useful framework to understand this. There are three core service areas of public health and a group of enablers that ensure that these services can occur effectively and efficiently. The three core areas of public health are protection, promotion, and prevention. Protection is about protecting the health of the population. This includes controlling infectious diseases, managing environmental hazards, ensuring a healthy workplace, and managing health emergencies. Promotion is about improving the health of the population. It covers a broad range of activities that not only focus on the individual, such as promoting health behaviors over a life course, it also focuses on addressing the determinants of health. Prevention is about preventing health issues before they occur. It includes activities such as vaccination and screening. To enable these core areas to function, there needs to be good governance. Advocacy to influence and obtain support and commitment for actions that support a health goal. Capacity, having an adequate, well-trained and supported public health workforce and having accurate, timely information to support health actions, such as relevant research, surveillance, monitoring, and evaluation. So, who is responsible for public health? Ultimately, the responsibility of creating a healthy population lies with all sectors of society. While health departments have a central role in public health, improving the health of a population requires coordinated efforts from a wide range of stakeholders and sectors. They include other areas of government, 
the private sector, non-governmental organizations, international organizations, and local communities, and across various sectors, such as education, finance, employment, housing, agriculture, veterinary, environment, and others, all united with a shared goal of improving the health of the public. While public health has made significant strides, several ongoing challenges continue to pose serious threats to health. These include climate change, antimicrobial resistance, the emergence and spread of infectious diseases with pandemic potential, healthcare in fragile conflict-affected and vulnerable settings, as well as the increasing burden of non-communicable diseases. Addressing these challenges will require commitment and the coordinated and collaborative efforts of all sectors of society. And that's a quick introduction to the fascinating field of public health.